haben. Hey guys, I'm Zeta Sage Blaze and welcome back to the Moonlight World. Today we're going to be building a cute little habitat for a cute little animal, the striped skunk. So this is going to be the second habitat in the little North American area in the Moonlight World. Uh, just after the raccoons that we built last week and it's based on a real habitat in the Singapore night safari which I saw a picture of um, which I really like it's got one unique little feature that's really cool that I don't think I've seen done before um, which we'll get to a bit later on in the video uh, I can't actually remember what animal the habitat was for um, I've got a photo but uh, you can't see the animal in the photo. Uh, I didn't sort of uh, take note of what animal it was, but I'm presuming it is some kind of small mammal. It looks like that kind of uh, that kind of habitat. Um, we're gonna use loads of the new Twilight Pack pieces for this, starting with the mason walls, or mason brick walls, mason work walls, I can't remember what they're called. Uh, and these new wood planks, which I really like, um, or rather these new wood planks which I really like which are a bit bigger um, these are so versatile um, I'm going to recreate the sort of wooden slats that were on the walls of the habitat which is one of the things I really liked about it um, so just loads of these spun around moved into position and then I'm going to subtly recolor each one so each plank isn't exactly the same color and it just creates a really nice sort of front for the habitat uh, building it on this piece of wall so that it's on a grid so that we can just copy it around. Uh, this habitat is pretty much a rectangle which is very unusual for one of my builds. Normally I try and avoid squares and rectangles as much as possible because it can be kind of, uh, kind of boring but this is a really nicely put together habitat uh, which I loved as soon as I saw the photo of it so I think we'll be alright using this shape because that's what the real habitat looks like uh, and it's very attractive so this should be cool. If any of you guys have been to the Singapore Night Safari, let me know in the comments. I would absolutely love to go. It seems like such a cool idea. Uh, I've seen some videos of people touring the zoo. Uh, it's got a, um, like a, it seems like a Jurassic Park inspired sort of um, automatic Jeep tour, which starts it off uh, with a voiceover telling you about the animals, which they've obviously been heavily influenced by Jurassic Park when they were creating. Um, and yeah, it just seems like a lot of fun to uh, to go around. It seems like the first part of the zoo is sort of normal, non-nocturnal animals or diurnal animals like elephants and lions and things like that. Uh, and then as it gets darker, you get to the nocturnal part. It just seems like a great idea for a zoo. Um, but yeah, anyway, back to this zoo. I'm gonna put this right up against the path um, and then use some of the really cool dirt textures that you get on the tropical map so that you can't see the join between the log chippings and the path. Gonna use the new twilight walls, or roofs rather, mixed in with one of the clay roofs from the base game to get a unique look on the roof. So I really wanna try and match the real habitat as closely as possible. And we don't have a, sort of an exact version of that roof in the game. But I'm making two different groups with two different roof pieces in them. Uh, like you can see here, I'm going to combine them together. I'll sink the top one down and that'll make a nice uh, roof pattern. And then we're going to raise the terrain on the inside of the habitat so, it's, um, so it brings the animals closer to the eye line of the guests. These skunks are absolutely tiny. Um, definitely one of the smallest animals in the game. So we need to make sure that the viewing is going to be um, spot on for these guys. So remove the path so that I can get that all sorted flatten it on the guest side of the habitat and then we'll put the paths back in again and then now they should be like right up to the habitat put a mesh roof in so the animals get some natural light one of the unique things about this zoo and one of the things that uh, confuses me sometimes <laughs> is that building it for nocturnal animals because it's open at night rather than keeping them indoors and then having uh, lights on all night and no lights during the day so they're active in the day you're actually just allowing them to live their sort of normal life cycles and then trying to subtly light the habitat so that the guests can still see them when the guests are there at night so we can actually put windows into the roof unlike in a, a normal nocturnal house so that's cool makes the lighting a bit more interesting i'm going to put glass all the way around it um, and then build some more interesting joins between the glass panes 
Uh, these match the, the ones in the real habitat, just using some of the metal pole pieces that have been recolored. And then it's on to the unique um, aspect of the habitat, which is what caught my eye when I saw this real habitat. Um, these trees, so painted onto the glass in the habitat, are these um, shadows of trees all the way along. Um, I have no idea what purpose they serve. Maybe from the animal's perspective, when they look out of the habitat, the outline of the guests uh, staring at them is broken up by the trees. Um, maybe it feels more natural for them. Maybe it just looks cool. I have no idea, but um, I definitely think it looks cool, which is why I wanted to use them for this. And we'll drop a few of the new uh, fallen leaves in as well, uh, which to be honest, don't really make sense in a tropical environment, but um, it just looks cool. And <laughs> I thought, why not? Um, I like the way it looks and it brings a North American vibe to it. And then I'm gonna put like a, uh, a jungle mural painting or photo at the back to make the habitat look a little larger than it is. Because um, one of the things that they do in the, the Singapore Night Safari and, and any nocturnal house really, is you've got to really make the habitats pretty small um, in order for the guests to be able to see the animals in the low lighting. Um, so anything you can do to make it appear to be bigger than it is, is useful. Um, we'll put their burrow in and do some terrain work around it so that uh, it looks nice and natural and we're going to do loads of um, bushes and shrubs around it as well so it's partially hidden uh, and put lots of the little um, sleeping leaves as well which are a really good piece for habitats like this um, always good to use some of the pieces in the um, habitat menu rather than just the construction and nature menu put all their enrichment in again trying to concentrate most of it near the uh, windows so the guests get a good view and we can sort of drag the animals around to where we want them to be. And I'm also gonna put a mister in as well. Um, do this a lot, obviously this is a North American animal. This zoo is gonna be a lot warmer than it's used to. Um, a skunk would, uh, according to the game, um, according to some of my other research, would be okay in these temperatures, even though it's a lot hotter than it would be back home uh, because even in the parts of North America that they live in, obviously in summer, it does get pretty hot. Um, so this is just sort of slightly warmer than that all year round. Um, they should be okay with it, but misters are good for keeping animals cool. Um, obviously it's more of a sort of a misting spray than the fog effect you get in the game, but it should um, sort of bring that to mind. And it also adds a nice bit of movement to the habitat. Uh, we'll put a wall in here to separate off the inside and obviously one of the new PVC doors which are going everywhere. I just spent um, about an hour putting, <laughs> I can't even tell you how many of these into Tecton Zoo because um, they're so cool and there's so many parts of that zoo that I wanted to have these but they weren't in the game so um, now they are, uh, they've gone in everywhere there and we'll put some ivy in to cover this up. I really like the new variegated ivy piece, uh, but it's pretty small, unfortunately. There's no like really big ones like this, and I didn't want it to look copy and pasted, so I've just gone with the old ivy there. Sink some of the ponytail palms into the ground, as always. <laughs> pretty much can't uh, build the habitat without those now. And then some more of these fallen leaves to give it the North American vibe. And then I'm just gonna put another layer of bricks um, along the bottom and a few bushes to make the outside um, look good and start getting close to where we want to be and then we'll tidy up this side of the habitat uh, make sure that the uh, door is actually visible and the keepers aren't just going to walk straight through a wall um, and then it's on to the last few sort of touch-ups to get this looking nice so i'm going to put some decals along the bottom of the glass just to make it a bit more realistic and then some i don't know what they're called imperfections in the wood is it called a, a wall a wall <laughs> no idea and then we'll get onto the lighting. This is really tricky, trying to get it in here without it reflecting too much on the glass. That big red sort of splash of color you can see there is actually the setting sun, not one of these lights. So I can change that later for the cinematics. I'm gonna get some red lights and some blue lights in to simulate moonlight. And that's the habitat pretty much done. Just light it up very subtly outside so the guests uh, can sort of see what's in there. Um, and that is the skunk habitat. Uh, so check out the cinematics. I really hope you guys like the final thing. I like to think it is small but perfectly formed. Um, let me know in the comments what you think of it. And I'll see you again soon for some more Planet Z. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.